All right, so Mark Harley continues to make the rounds, talking about his fallout with Brennan Schaub. This time he just did a two-hour interview, and there are a lot of great moments from it, which we're going to check out. But one of the best parts was afterwards. I guess Mark still has access to Brennan's Twitter account because he was running his social media, I think. And Brennan, of course, forgot to revoke his access. And Mark, he decided to promote the interview by posting it to Brennan's Twitter account. And then Mark told everybody on the Fight in the Kids subreddit to go check it out while it's still up because obviously it's not going to last long. I think it lasted like less than an hour, but obviously it got a lot of attention and people were talking about it. And it was a good way to promote the interview. And it's just funny that, of course, Brendan, he knows Mark is going after him right now, but Mark still has access to his Twitter account. Like, he didn't think about that. Like, Brendan should know at this point that Mark is not messing around. You know, he just leaks some more DMs on the Fighting the Kids subreddit as well. And during this interview he just did on the MMA Holes YouTube channel, he was going off on Brendan. He's definitely not holding back here. And in this interview, he dropped some new information on what it was like working with Brendan, why he got fired. He talked about the gringo poppy a little bit. And then at the end, he answered some super chats and somebody asked him if the Fight of the Kid podcast is scripted at all. And he had the best response to that. Wait, are the shows super scripted? Like is T-Fat K scripted? Is the Shab show scripted? That implies that Brendan could read or memorize things. So good luck with that. <laughs> and then also at some point, the host asked Mark about being Brendan's handler. And Mark basically explains he probably would have been Brendan's handler, but Brendan wouldn't listen to a thing he said, which I believe, you know, it doesn't sound like Brendan wants to listen to anyone. And it's funny because it sounded like Mark was trying to give him decent advice. And I'm sure a lot of the people around him try to help him out, but he just thinks he knows everything. And if he actually listened to Mark, he probably could have, you know, I don't know if he could turn his channel around. I think it's long gone, but... You know, at some point back in the day when he started to go downhill, he probably could have done something to save it if he just listened to actual feedback. Like once you start thinking that every negative comment you get is just a hater or a troll and nobody's trying to give you any helpful criticism at all, then you're in trouble. And that's definitely where Brendan started going wrong. Like even Mark, an employee of his, who's just trying to help out, it sounds like Brendan doesn't want to hear a thing he says. Like anything negative, it's not going to help. Brendan's got it all under control. But obviously at this point, Brendan just needs to swallow his pride and get a handler. That was the best advice Joe could have given him. He's 100% right. Brendan needs a handler. Look, Brendan's my boy, but mm -hmm. he needs a handler. Yeah. He needs someone like me around him all the time. What are you going to do? No, 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 no. Here's why. Yeah. And he'll go, yeah, you're right. And it sounds like Mark was open to being Brendan's handler. You know, he could have helped him out a lot. He sounds like he knows what he's talking about for the most part in terms of social media, a lot more than Brendan does. But Brendan just believes he has it all figured out, I guess, and he doesn't need to listen to anybody. Were you technically Brendan Schaub's handler? What's this about? No, um, okay. I did a lot of his social media, but but handler implies that I had some sort of leverage over him, like or some sort of final say. But like, this is a guy who doesn't listen to anybody. You know what I mean? Like he's going to do his own thing. I can, and even to the point where I go, look, it would be better for you if I had some sort of control or like, or if you gave me permission to be hypercritical of you, because I think that's actually my biggest asset is to look at something and come in and be like, you want God honest truth about this? I'm going to give it to you straight. I'm not here to on you, but like, you know, I can break down what you're doing wrong in my limited areas of expertise, social media being I'm not, you know, the foremost expert, but like I have my take on things and I've kind of experimented with various things to get where I'm at. And I, and I have my tricks up my sleeve. And I think, you know, one of the things wrong with Brendan and his Instagram and why he's really frustrated trying to get new followers. Um, cause he's been stuck at 1.2 million, you know, he says for like six years cause he bought a bunch of followers probably, but like he, uh, <laughs> He just doesn't focus on good content. He thinks he's entitled to likes and views and all the stuff. And it's like, Brendan kind of takes this attitude of like, why am I not getting this? I'm gonna hire a new person and like underpay them, but expect the world and kind of have like somebody who's on call 24 seven to post, but they also need to do like strategic thinking for me. Like he's, you know, he, he undervalues everyone else. So um, like he, he kind of alternately like, like Handler is almost like, oh, that would be a much more powerful position. You really treated me like an assistant. It's so funny to think that Brendan's sitting around pouting about how he only has 1.2 million Instagram followers. And also it sounds like some of those are definitely bought. 
but the guy he just doesn't know what he's doing i mean you're never going to gain more instagram followers if they stay the same i think that's a win you know if he doesn't lose instagram followers i think that's what he should be focused on like he's never going to gain instagram followers that's ridiculous you know his best bet if you want to get instagram followers just start over at this point like you probably won't reach 1.2 million but his current account if there's bot followers on there it's shot you know i don't think he's going anywhere with that and of course brendan he's not sitting around thinking about how you make better content for instagram he's just sitting around thinking about how he's shadow banned or how instagram doesn't like him or something so also during this interview i guess the host talked to somebody out of brendan schaub's camp like before this i don't know who but somebody involved with him so they told him questions to ask or things to bring up and i guess brendan wanted to give his side of the story but this is just the worst way to do it like this is going to do nothing I don't know why Brennan just doesn't make a YouTube video talking about it or something. You know, at least you would take advantage of the drama. You get some views from it. And it'd be better off than just doing this whole thing. Because Brennan, he always gets involved in drama, but he never gives any statements on it. It's all just like behind the scenes stuff he tries to do. And it never works out. And he's never going to learn. It's awesome. Okay, so, I, uh, that's, that's all they're saying to yeah. me. Now, this is from their camp. Uh, okay, showing up late, just all around being super unreliable. So showing up late, how do you show up late? <laughs> late for what? Late I for guess what? for work, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. No, well, that's the thing is like, I actually told him after we'd had a discussion, and again, none of this was like ever said to me, if if I was late to work, we have a, a, a start, time, like there's a loose start time. Maybe sometimes I'd be a few minutes late to shop or something like that, but, he, but, but Brendan would like, you don't know when he's going to show up. One time he came at like 10.30 for a 9 a.m. show, and, you know, without warning anybody. If I'm late, I'm going to tell you. So also the host asked some other questions that I guess Brendan or somebody around him wanted him to ask. And Mark pretty much just laughs at all of them. And I don't know what Brendan really expected with this. It just seems like he's grasping at straws. So also during this interview, Mark was talking about how fed up he got with Brendan working for him because I guess Brendan would always give him these promises and never follow through with them. He said when Brendan first pitched the idea of him having a podcast on the Thick Boy Network, he's like, dude, I'd love to make you a millionaire. Your podcast is going to be big. I have this whole podcast network going on. And then when Mark got there, he was putting in all this work and he was on call like 24-7 like responding to anything Brendan needed because he thought there'd be a payoff in the end, which there definitely would not be. But Brendan kind of pitched him this idea like, oh, dude, your podcast can be big. And he also said Brendan would tell him he'd get sponsorship deals, but then he'd make him split it with a bunch of other people. And it must just be frustrating to see all that happening. You know, like you're trying to help this guy out as much as possible and you're putting in all this work and the best Brendan could do is just run things into the ground and not listen to a word you have to say. You know, it's kind of like what happened with Deaf Noodles and the guy he started a podcast with. Like, there are actually a lot of similarities between Brendan Schaub and Deaf Noodles. But when Deaf Noodles, he started a podcast with this guy, Steven, and he promised him, like, it was going to be big. And he also opened a comedy space. And he's like, yeah, it's going to be a big time thing. You start doing shows here, bring people in. And Steven was doing all this work. You know, he's trying to find people to bring in. He's finding the talent. He's setting up all the shows. And then he wouldn't even get to perform sometimes. And Deaf Noodles is like, oh, it's going to pay off in the end. And he was barely making any money. And eventually he's just like, F this. Like, what the hell am I doing? Why am I helping this guy out so much? And he really has nothing in return. And he's just destroying his own business. Like, that's exactly what's going on with Brendan and Deaf Noodles. Like, I would not want to be a part of any of that. To me, if I were getting those kind of numbers, I would learn how to produce a podcast myself and do it out of my house. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like, sure. to, to be profitable. I don't know why you need a whole industrial space and, like, like he has, there might be three other people in the room when we do shop show, like t- for a show that gets like 35 to 50,000 views a show. Like it's just a waste of resources. You got chin there. You got Casey's producing it, editing it. I'm there like transcribing, uh, you know, quotes during the thing and making thumbnails sometimes and doing the title and description. It's like, why do like, this is not a three man job. I'm sorry. But like, if I was him, I'd be like, I'm going to see, like I'm going to, you know, cause I, I learned how to edit in Photoshop while I was there. You can pick up skills pretty easily. And then, you know, if you're willing to put that time into doing your own thing, I'm just the type of guy, like I wouldn't want to be in charge of other people doing stuff that I had no f- clue how to do. Mm-hmm. See, Mark brings up a lot of good points here. The production costs for his podcast in LA for that space. I'm sure it's a lot of money. And then the whole setup, all his employees and everything. And then you see no return on it. And it's a podcast you could shoot out of your house. Like Mark said. You know, there are other podcasters, the biggest podcasters in the world. They'll do the podcast like sitting on their couch. Like, is it that serious you need to have this whole studio? He starts gay rumors about people regularly. 
you know, yeah. and I can think of multiple people off the top of my head who I'm close with where I'm like, dude, that's not cool and they're not gay and and you're not citing any evidence. You didn't walk in on them having sex with men, but like I'm thinking of three individuals specifically, two of which have high profiles, another wit, uh, of which is a very wealthy man, like, and I had known him and he, he treated Brendan very well. And the guy, he turns around, he's like, you know, it's a gay guy, right? I'm like, what are you talking about? But it's almost like anybody he feels threatened by when they leave the situation, like, you know, that guy's gay, but he's not citing anything. He's not going like, oh yeah, you could tell, or I saw a grinder on his phone or something. Like, like mm -hmm. if you're gonna say that, you better come with some evidence, but I wouldn't do that either way because it's unethical. You can't just like, if you think that guy's in the closet, you wanna out him secretly, it just keeps getting better and better. And like I said, at some point, they start talking about the gringo poppy. And it's so funny what Mark has to say. The thing, oh, here's one little insight. He goes, man, I thought, uh, you know, I thought I was going to do theaters after this. And uh, like, I thought that was going to like elevate me to the next level. Like he was like really confused as to why the gringo poppy didn't launch him to like doing theater tours. And it's like, okay. So like, why did you take that for granted? And his agents, by the way, were like, don't, it's not ready yet. Don't, don't put out like, like, don't even film it. That's what they said. Like, it wasn't like they looked at the special and said, don't release it. They said about, um, he makes, he does this whole bit about how his, his mom or his mother-in-law is like this, mijo, 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 I don't speak English. And they're like, like, you kind of picture this, like, you know, this woman who just made it over the border to like cook for her son-in-law. And it's like, the mom in law is like this beautiful 50 year old European looking woman who speaks perfect English with a slight accent. <laughs> like none of it is fucking real. You know, he says his wife's from Guadalajara moved here 10 years ago illegally. She was born in Hollywood. All right, so also during this interview, they're talking about Brendan's lawsuit with Unique. If you remember, Brendan was suing some small YouTuber for copyright infringement. And I think they said that Unique might've won. I think he announced that the other day, I'm not totally sure but he's talking about how much money Brennan's been spending on it. And it sounds like Brennan's been bragging about it, even though it's done nothing. It's only made things worse for him. Like once he sued Unique, everybody talked about it. That was huge news. Like Penguins, I think made a video about it, which I'm sure got like 5 million views. Only more people started making fun of Brendan. Like that was the dumbest thing he could have done. And then he wastes hundreds of thousands of dollars for it. And Unique still has a YouTube channel. So like, what did he gain here? Brendan spent several hundred thousand dollars apparently fighting this guy in court, you know, and he keeps bragging about like, I got these beast of a lawyer, Justin Bieber's guy and you know, this and that like, to, to, but it's like, okay, like, but <laughs> so you can keep this guy's YouTube channel down because the guy instantaneously made another YouTube channel and um, has been making videos about Brendan <laughs> since. So he literally just took, you know, like a quarter million dollars and flushed it down the toilet. And he kept complaining about like, oh, I got another like, you know, bill for $10,000 to have to file this thing. So it's pretty obvious that Brendan just loves throwing money out the window on the dumbest stuff. You know, he never actually invests it properly. It's crazy. He hires all these employees, this whole production setup, and it's just like adds no value or anything. You know, Joe Rogan has the most popular podcast in the world. It's just him and a producer. Brennan Schaub has like 10 producers, a creative director, all these people, a huge setup, and his podcast is just failing miserably. And then he starts throwing all the money out the window to sue this guy. Like it's going to change something. All right. So there's just one more clip I want to play here from the end of the interview. Brendan, go live with me on any podcast. Go live with me, go live with me. And we can air it out and we can bring our evidence and we can discuss these things that you're claiming. So I'm gonna challenge you to do that, knowing that you can't do that because you're an egomaniac who's been lying about the entire situation. So hopefully Brendan accepts that offer. I'd obviously love to see a podcast between these two, but I highly doubt it. Even though if he wants Mark to settle down at all, if he wants him to take it easy, I think he might have to do a podcast with him. Hopefully Brian Callen could talk Brendan into it or something. You know, Brendan did go on the Tiger Blade podcast after all that drama. So there might be a little bit of hope here, but we'll have to wait and see. So let me know what you guys think about the whole thing. And then make sure you check out my Patreon account. There should be a new video up on there in a few days about Randall Carlson, the last Joe Rogan he went on. It's still not out yet. And I think Randall might have stumbled upon my video. I'm not sure I'll talk about it in the video on Patreon. So let me know what you guys think. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and I'll catch you at the next video.